Hey everybody, it's good to see you back again. Today we are going to take one more bite out of it. We'll do some more work toward getting this compartment filled up with pieces. So I decided to do some foundation work today. I'm gonna to begin with rehabbing the live power shaft right here. Several areas that need help. So spin it around to the first spot. We've got this keyway that is all wallowed out on the end right here. That is where the coupling for the live power hydraulic pump attaches. Ignore all of that wear for now. That will be addressed at a later date. So you can see it's quite wide right here and someone has been doing some punch work to tighten that up. I think what they were trying to do is keep the key from migrating this way. Now, if everything was fitting properly and the key was not worn, there's a step there. You can see it right off the end of the screwdriver right there. That key slot steps up shallower there and goes deeper there. That step should have located it, but with everything worn so bad, I think that was their solution for keeping the key in the coupling. The second place we need to look at is this pocket right here. We had a set screw that decided to start cutting threads in the side of it, so we need to close that up a little bit. And the third spot is the drive splines down here at the end. So. When you look at the shaft from this direction, it looks like there's a twist in them, but there's not. That's just where the coupling actually cut into each one and took the material away. You see the reverse side, they're all nice and straight. So we need to fill that with some weld. We need to fill the pocket with some weld. And we need to close this keyway up at least this far, and I'll just recut it. So one thing we do have going for us, this whole shaft, again, is mild steel, so it doesn't matter how we weld on it. We are not going to change anything. So that's our plan, at least to start with. Let's get all sparky with it. All right, everybody, we've got it closed up down here. I just took flat files and just got everything cleaned up to the point where, like with uh, this adapter right here, I can slide it right on. So we will fix it into the milling machine to finish off the rest of those splines. Here's what I plan on doing, all right? You can see I took the center out of a couple large hex nuts and I have them um, drilled and tapped for a set screw. 180 apart, so there's two in each one. And the thinking here is we can time the six sides of the nut to the six splines, get it all tightened down with the set screws that will hold it in position. And then every time you need to do another spline, just turn it another flat, do a spline, turn it flat, do a spline, on and on. In theory anyway, makes sense, right? Okay, everyone, we've got our step keyway established once again. So we are full depth right to about here where it kicked up the last time. And then we kept the uh, top end of it here intact. So that was a rather difficult cut because I didn't have this end very well supported with my setup. I decided to go slow. Luckily, it all worked out. So now we test the new key that I've got. These are 3 16 square keys. We want to check the fit. And this is not trimmed to length yet either. We're just testing it. And yeah, have to tap it in. Good tight fit in there. I like it when you have to tap a key in just a little bit. And then the uh, live hydraulic pump drive coupling. So this is the old one. Again, another soft steel piece. 
those splines had just about worn their way through. I'm just going to put a production drive on there. It's the same thing. So held on the same way. And yeah, yeah, we can tap that the rest of the way on. Nice tight fit for that too. That gets all of that wobble out of the connection. So that's just the way I like to do it. Loosen that back up. All right. I really like how all this fits. So this was the easy one to do. The other end is going to be a little bit more involved. So we'll flip that around in the machine and we basically carry out that same step six more times for this end. Alright everybody, all six of the spline edges have been established, so now I'm just making the final passes, cleaning up the last of that weld that was left down in the valleys. You can see we've got kind of a hump right there. So yeah, each spline takes at least two passes, one to establish and then a second one to uh, clean the residue from the weld, but it's time consuming, that's what we do. Okay, everybody back to the bench once again and the hollowed out hex nut tools worked very well to index the splines to the milling machine head so we've got a couple more tools now for the pile that I'm not sure what I'm ever going to do anything with but they're there so now to bring us all up to speed we have the keyway fixed for that live power coupling at the back. So that means we can get rid of this portion of the original coupling that was horribly worn, plus that flogged key for it, and replace those pieces with the new key and the much better condition production drive. I also, off camera, got in and renewed the pocket for that set screw for the live power clutch hub. I just dremeled all that out with a round stone and everything's looking good there. And really happy with how all the splines came together on this end now. And I've got this inch and a quarter six spline hub that is maybe going to take the place of the worn one, but just to do a check here, the fit is very good. So we've got just a little bit a little bit of click there, but we free float and it does it in all six spline positions. So can't really ask for anything better than that. Definitely better than what it was. And considering the tools I've got here to work with, I do think that turned out pretty well. So as long as we're in kind of the milling frame of mind, we need to do something about this. Yeah, it's bad. So on the live power shaft, the threads right here is where this horribly chiseled upon nut goes. And it works in conjunction with a set screw here to hold this live power clutch hub in position. And we've also got to look at this keyway right here. This is the old key that came out of it. You can tell it had ran loose for a time and had worn some steps in each side. Fortunately, the key slot was in good shape. I was able to find some 3 8 slightly oversized square key stock from McMaster Car, and I just replicated all the same features to that. So here's one more piece we can throw into the discard pile, and we can get the new key tapped in position. Again, I like it when you have to tap a key in place. You know everything's going to be tight then. 
So now we can start the hub on to the new key, nice and tight. But first, remember this pocket that we just renewed because the set screw had started biting into it a little bit. When we push this hub on all the way, yeah, good fit right there. The set screw is on a, like a 45 degree angle right here and it will go down and land into that pocket. And its job is to not only cinch the hub to the shaft, but once it bottoms out, it actually starts drifting the hub further up the shaft. So I think you'll be able to see it move when I see it. See how it moves it? Turn it out, it goes back. Turn it in, it slides forward. That set screw in conjunction with the nut here cinching on the front of that hub is what locks it in position on the life power shaft and dictates the gear mesh on the shell here at the back, not only with the PTO gear down below, but with that belt pulley gear that comes in from the side. And the production shafts are set up much the same way. So we've got the same 3 8 key slot there. We've got the same set screw pocket back there. The main difference is the size of the threads right here on the production shaft, which is smaller around than the prototype. These are like inch and 3 16 diameter threads, whereas this is one and a half by 18. And that means we could not use the production nut to swap out for this damaged one because it wouldn't even go on the shaft anyhow. So lucky us, we get to make yet another piece. So a few years ago, before we stepped away from X231 the last time, Senior and I got a good start on making a new nut. We have this blank right here. We got all of the threads cut on the inside, and we also made this dummy gauge of corresponding thread pitch just to be able to test the threads while the piece was still in the lathe to know if we had them at proper depth whatnot. So all that is proved out pretty well. Now we just need to shape all of the outside features of this blank to match this nut and it has to have all these same features if it is going to fit underneath the spider which will lock down right on top of it so we do have to replicate this fairly well <laughs> Here it is everybody, we've got the new copy. I like that, I think it looks really, really nice. And side by side with the old one, we just replicated the notch at the top. Yeah, only thing we didn't duplicate is all the chisel marks. So we are set up in that department here. That goes in the discard pile. We also have the fold over lock that went under the old one, right up against the face of that hub. and we needed to do something about that as well. So while I was at it, I just carbon copied the whole thing right down to the tang that's on the inside. So we are set there. Yet another piece to the discard pile. So we can take these, 
start them on the shaft. So we'll engage that locked tab with the key slot and we can this nut is kind of hard to start because those threads are so fine, but once you dance it in position just right, helps to go backwards and then there, when you feel the jump, boom, you are good to go on. So, all right, that's how we lock that hub completely in position between the set screw and the nut on the front. We are good to go. And keeping with the current fold over lock kick, we needed to do something about that heavy washer that was inadequate behind the bearing nut for the back of that shaft. You guessed it, discard pile, new fold over lock. I made a heavy one that has a good tab on the inside to engage with the keyway where it goes through those threads. So I'm gonna throw those bearings on the back once again. New fold over lock will go right up against that back bearing, nut against the lock, and when we get everything set, we can fold the lock down on any flat that is convenient, and we should have a good setup at the back here too. So, Tiny Bites, we are building it piece by piece. Let's make some more quick and easy progress now. So we've got the spider that lost. It's got one of the ears on it, but the other two are gone. We picked this one out of the bottom of the case. So this one is very much prototyped. It's very, very close to what the production version is. This one, they put this bushing in the center though, and it's not for having to spin on the shaft because this spider is locked to this hub. So it rotates with the shaft. The only thing it has to do is just slide about maybe an inch up and down the shaft as that clutch locks and unlocks again. So the reason they put a bushing in here, I believe, is because they sourced this hub and this pressure plate, the spider nut, and the spider all from twin disc. And they found that they had to get this piece out in front of those threads on a smaller diameter shaft, and they all had the same size hole in the middle. So they just bushed that down to inch and a quarter to fit that shaft. So I don't even need to put a bushing in the new one because the new one I have had an inch and a quarter straight hole in it already. I just had to hone it out just a little bit to improve the fit on the shaft. So we will get this one fitted as well. Test it up against the new nut that we made and it surrounds it perfectly. So, very good fit on the shaft as well. Yeah, that's about all the travel that this has to cope with. So, we are looking good in that department. So the next hurdle we have to clear is whether or not we can still use the prototype bronze yoke that used to be up on the top colored portion of the original. It does have 10X numbers on on them too. This is a 10X6021. It's a bit rough cast, but I believe that's what it is. And I want to be able to reuse that prototype yoke because the productions are very different. It's just more of a saddle piece that goes down over the top of it. That's a 10A7157. That would work, but it, this is all about trying to use as many prototype pieces as possible. And the halves went on just like that, and it should be all the same from what I've measured so far. So until we actually put them on and check the fit, we don't know for sure. But yeah, that is perfect. We're doing this with one hand, but it spins freely. No bind when you push them together. Perfect. We get to reuse a couple of the prototype pieces in conjunction with a production. That's always a victory. So, you guessed it, discard pile. So the bolts are tight, everything is lubricated, but before we can put the spider onto the hub, we need to build the rest of the clutch first. So we'll look at the discs, and I cleaned the steels up with a scotch spray pad. They had a little bit of bluing on them, but they were not heat checked or scored, and they are going to reuse just fine. The bronze discs, though, did not fare quite so well. You can see some material had started to pull out of these, and 
being that this tractor had such thick grease in the back end, I don't think we had as much lubrication that was even able to splash up on these. And with this clutch being unlocked the majority of the time, these have to cope with slipping quite often. So the good part of it though, these are the same as the AmpliTorque bronze discs. And I've got a lot of those spare parts. So I scotch braided up a set of these. They are in very good condition. They'll go just fine with the steels. So once again, more into the discard pile. So we just need to assemble the clutch pack for now. This is not permanent. This is just to get the stack height established so that we can move on to everything that goes on top of it. Just do bronze, steel, bronze, steel, bronze, steel. And finally end with a bronze. Stay there. And now the pressure plate. And we are getting into the pieces that killed the whole back end of the tractor the first time. Two of the three over center clutch dogs are still in place and a third one of course came detached and that's what bounced around and ruined everything in the whole back end. And we've got torn links and loose pins. And if you look at what they had going on here, they obviously had trouble with those roll pins walking out because they've put safety wire through just about every one. There's a wire in place there and we still have a roll pin by itself right here. But we got wire through that one. We got wire through the ones on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is of course, replace all three of these dogs because um, this one you can see is awfully bent. There was a lot of stuff that, yeah, it's still got torn off link ends on it. There's a lot of things that really came apart. So I've got three very good condition production ones, which are the same as what these are. So there's no difference there. And I've got good pins and good links for these. But what I'm going to do on this entire live power clutch is get away from the roll pins entirely. And we're going with cotter pins, all right? So I've got three main bottom pivot pins here that are all appropriate for cotter pin installs, as well as the upper link pins here. And because like I said before, this clutch spends most of its life disengaged, these pins can travel around and vibrate and just move a lot more than everything in the AmpliTorque, which stays engaged most of the time. When this clutch is locked over center and everything is engaged, none of these pieces can move. They're all held solidly in position. But considering this clutch will stay unlocked most of the time, I don't want to have to worry about roll pins moving around. So I'll get these two dogs out of the pressure plate, clean it up, and we'll move on. And good news, that pressure plate was in excellent condition. So flip on over there, come on, there we are. We've got three very good clutch dogs and links in there. So that means we can take the ones we removed and yep, discard pile, it is growing by the minute. Now I can line the pressure plate onto the hub and the adjustment nut can go on now. This is gonna be kind of a trick keeping these clutch dogs off of the perimeter of the, uh, the spider nut long enough to get everything threaded together. Zip, clutch, spider, and yoke now. And I'm not going to uh, do a permanent cotter pin fold on these link pins because I'm probably going to be taking this back apart. So we'll just throw it all together enough to test the assembly for now. All right, the moment of truth now to see if we can get an over center snap on the spider without it interfering with the custom nut that we made. So I have to tighten that one notch and then we'll see. Getting a little bit better. I think we're in the neighborhood too because there was some pretty good pin wear on that notch, a little bit on that one. Granted, we'd have to go a lot tighter than this to get a good snap out on the lever, we're just checking it by hand for now. So 
There. That's a good over center right there. And you know what? Get you all off the pole here. I can see, yes, we have excellent clearance down in there between the nut and the spider all the way around. So that means all of our new custom parts are going to jive with the production parts that are going to work with the prototype parts. I think we've got an episode. Oh, that was four days worth of work, believe it or not. Well, I know it really doesn't look like we got a lot put together today, but we actually made quite a lot of progress. And when you take the discard pile away from the, what's on the bench, we're pretty much just left with this shell. So beginning next time, we are going to have to replace these thin wall bushings that did not hold up in there with these much more capable, thicker wall bushings. That means we will have to mock this entire assembly up into the tractor with the shell on in place behind the clutch to get our gear mesh established to then decide how far we are going to have to cut the shaft to match the new bushings. Believe it or not, that small pile was a whole lot of work. So I hope to see you all back again for that. Um, still, this was the episode I'd been dreading because I knew it was going to be so tedious. Happy to have that much behind me, and I'm happy with how things look so far. Thank you again for watching, everyone. Please tune in again.